I saw your stream. I've seen you seen you a couple times, and uh, the, the comment section gets a little rowdy. You know, I clearly don't belong, but no, you guys tolerate me, and that's like super cool. Well, it's. <sighs> Are you familiar with the tolerance paradox? I don't believe so. It essentially states that if you tolerate intolerance, then society becomes intolerant. Right? Can, you, uh, can you repeat that? I'm sorry. If you tolerate intolerance, then society becomes intolerant. So it's, that makes sense, yeah. it's an argument for those within sort of progressive spheres to say, like, look, shitting on people who shit on you is not the same. So, like, when the queer community is dealing with Christians who constantly persecute us, Republicans who constantly chase us legally, a society that shits on us or excludes us, right? For us to be intolerant to those forces is ethically justifiable. It's like saying to a black person during the civil rights movement, hey, right, you shouldn't be mean to that racist who wants you to hang. That's an insane position. Right? Fuck that guy. Fuck him. Right? He's human trash. Fuck that guy. Right? So it's sort of the same mentality is that it's going to be a little rough for anybody who exhibits uh, uh, or expresses ideologies or ideas. Um, it's going to get a little rocky um, when somebody shows bias. Being good faith, being will willing to weather the storm. Being will willing to be open-minded about it, that earns you good faith. But a group that's constantly under attack needs to protect itself. I feel that. So you're, you're a bit young. Um, so you weren't around for um, this sort of heyday of Christians in this country reveling in God's cure for homosexuality and cheering the demise of gays and the era where Christians and Republicans would wear uh, uh, medical masks in public to pr protect themselves from the gay disease, even though heterosexuals were getting it <laughs> readily. Um, oh yeah. Like, it, yeah, I, I didn't know that that was a thing. <laughs> oh Yes. We're, we're not even one generation out from self-identified Christians, self-identified Republicans cheering in the streets as gays die openly in large numbers and a White House that encouraged it. Right? Like, this is not some quote unquote distant history of like the civil rights movement where you're like, oh, the person who remembers that is, you know, some grandmotherly old black person that you can sort of distance yourself a little bit. Look at me on stream. I remember this. Okay. Yeah. Like, it's, it's yeah, different. It hasn't gone away. It's not died off. This isn't 150 years ago. This isn't generational. This is right now still happening. There is a pastor who I could pull up the fucking footage of in Texas making an argument for how we should convict gays of, uh, of the crime of homosexuality, line them up on the wall, and shoot them all in the back of the head. From the pulpit arguing a Christian nationalist position of executing homosexuals en masse. There was a Washington state representative who was sitting at the time who had a document distributed 
that outlet uh, that laid out a plan for how the coming religious wars should go, should unfold and the rounding up and execution of all of the sodomites the atheists who refused to recant would be executed as well everybody would have their stuff repatriated and brought into the christian national uh, nationalist movement right these are these are people of prom- uh, of of prominence within our society now right now right we are as a community under attack qu- quite literally all the time and we bear it with a certain uh um um good nature that is shocking because you see what happens when a white man in this country is told that hey you don't get to have quite as much privilege as you used to they start raiding the capital and shooting shit like it gets unhinged when you look at the oppositional side to this argument they start setting up militias and compounds and arming themselves from the, for the coming war right they start talking about blood in the streets they start blowing up government buildings timothy mcveigh right this is this is the the two sides are not equal in this conversation one side is just saying hey could you just like let me live my life and be seen as a human being and the other is literally saying we want to shoot you in the back of the head and that's the right wing side that's the republican side that's the christian side that's the fox news that's the newsmax side that's that side that that rhetoric comes from there's no love Are lost on the around? democrat there's no love lost with the democrats because we know while they're not actively yelling for us to be genocided they'll sit by and let us be genocided so it's very much a harm reduction for us no love is lost there but, but we know which side is actively coming for us which side actively comes from minorities which side actively carries water for corporate multinational corporations democrats do plenty of that too but dude the republicans are out of control right like that's that's the reality of the situation and this is it gets so normalized using such concepts as the overton window where the center position can get slid to the right where it can get slid around the spectrum and when it sort of stops there that becomes normal and that becomes your new center so what seems moderate to you what seems like a centrist position is actually bordering on fascism and that gets super concerning for the rest of us <laughs> who who are sitting by looking at this with a calibrated overton window going um yeah some watching some cnn isn't going to cure that you need a readjustment so oh I- see that's i actually disagree with you on that as far as how you guys said um you know i don't i don't need to be watching anything right wing at all i think regardless you've got to be wrong and i i think you might be able to hear me out um if <laughs> no matter what side let's say one side is totally and completely right and the other side is totally and completely wrong i want to at least hear what either side is saying so that at least i can see you know i can hopefully see i'm always open to having my mind you've created a false dichotomy for yourself because there is no true representation of progressive or leftist ideologies in america and so what you identify as a left-right spectrum is a center-right to far-right spectrum and that's our problem with that statement and actually, if I can say well, so? also that, well, a, a really important thing before you can get into, oh, I should watch both sides of the conversation is you need a a pretty strong media literacy understanding to be able to really parse what you're hearing, not to mention the willingness Hello? to research what's oh, being can you told. not can you not hear? Oh, AJ, he can't hear you simultaneously. 
Oh, oh okay. dang. I'm well, sorry. You, you I didn't realize anything. what was going on. Um, yeah. So, okay. Yeah. That wasn't, I, was, I figured it would be in the feedback loop, but it's not. Um, Kai, I would just ask him the question. Just ask oh, him the question if he's okay with uh, like, uh, having other religious schools, right? The, the, just be the, like, the hey, if you're okay with this, can we mind. have, uh, can we have like, you know, uh, okay. a, a school that's under Sharia law? Like, just, just nail it. I mean, um, you know, anyways, I'm going to drop. Okay, I'm going to listen to this. I'll catch you later. Have a good time. Thank you for having me up. Yeah, feel free, Bye, Cody. Feel free to hit BMN. Um, okay, so well, now that I know that. Um, so he said no astro marcus just had a fucking aneurysm in chat because of it too um oh no so like would you be okay with an islamic school is in an, an islamic school mm -hmm. in america yeah of course yeah why not yeah so consistent there at least. An um, Islamic school? Would you of be course. would you be okay with a satanic school? Um that is definitely different. I get a different feeling from that. Um I I think in America you're allowed to do it, but just because you're allowed doesn't mean you should. I don't Well yeah, I guess so. Why, what do you know about Satanism? Um, so I'm, I'm sure you guys know I'm a Christian and I don't know why on earth you would ever worship, uh, or, or have, you know, the, the devil as your, they don't, your main guy. They don't. That's all. They don't. That's that's the or the, you know I know it's more about um, maybe worshiping yourself. That's what I've been told. It's a piss take. You know what that means? Yeah, that, obviously it's spitting in the face of yes. the Lord, and I just no feel no, like no 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 not the Lord, you Christians. The, right. It is a secular engagement. They're making a point. Their entire existence is to make a point. That we are a secular, so, we are a secular how, society. How do they go about it? Using your own dogma against you. But we, the imagery and all. Yes, that, that's of course. All I mean. Yeah, of course, yeah. because that's the number one way to wound a Christian is to use the Bible against them. Right. That's how we do damage to you lot. Is we yeah, pick no, up I, your own book and that, we read and back that. to you from it. And so they use your own book against you to make a point about secular society. Anywhere you guys pop your heads up, they're going to pop their heads up and they are going to use all of, of the horrible imagery that you hate against you. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Agreed. Yeah. And so the point of Satanism is to keep Christians in check because the Satanists have never drug a gay kid out into a field and beat him, beat him and tied him to a fence and left him to die. But you know who did? Some good, good old boy Christians, right? Like this is absolutely the, so. Like this is the problem: is that like Christianity? Personally, I'll be upfront with you. I'll be right up front with you. I think religion is a scourge of mankind, and I think the religious impulse is has held us back for far too long. I think it's goofy, woo-woo shit that we need to outgrow as, as a species at this point. That is my personal feeling on the matter. But I think if we're going to be accepting of others' beliefs, then Christians in this nation— this would go differently for other nations. Hinduism um, in India would be the classic example. But Christians mm -hmm. in this nation need to learn their place a bit because y'all have overstepped your bounds by quite a margin, including preaching politics from the pulpit, en engaging in politics in a non-secular fashion, funding political races, infiltrating our court system, attempting to straight up infiltrate our public schools. The agreement of a secular society where we don't fuck with you, you don't fuck with us, has been violated by Christians. And 
it's becoming hugely problematic for those of us that don't believe this stuff. Look, you want to believe it? That's fine. You want to dress a certain way? That's fine. You want to eat a certain way? That's fine. But you don't get to tell the rest of us how society should be run. That's how that works. That was the deal. That was set from the founders forward. And Christians have gotten a little too involved in our political system in the last 40 to 50 years. Mm. And it invites retribution because the deal of secular society was, look, you don't get involved in our politics and our politics won't get involved in your religion because it was equally seen at the founder's level that it would be mutually beneficial for governance to not be influenced by religion as it would be for religion not to be influenced by governance. Personally, I'd revoke all of the tax-exempt statuses of churches and religious organizations tomorrow if I had the ability. And I would go for back taxes, back to probably the Reagan era. When the Southern Baptist Convention started preaching from the pulpit, that there there was a need to vote for Reagan. I see that as a, a original sin, to borrow one's own terminology. That was the violation. That was the line that was crossed as far as I'm concerned. Once they started preaching in mass and in organized fashion from the, uh, from the convention leadership downward to the pastors themselves, I see that as a violation of our agreement in secular society, and I want the taxes now. I want you to pay for your fair share then because religion has had a free ride in this, in this country for too long. It's simple as that. And I, I, that's the reality of the secular society is if you don't want to be included in it, that's fine. You can go do your thing like the Amish, but don't start talking about how a woman in New York can't get access to abortion medication because your Bible says so. Which, by the way, your Bible does not say so. In fact, the only piece in the Bible about abortion is instructions on how to perform one. That's it. And per biblical law, um, the only, uh, the, there is, it isn't a human being until it takes the breath of life within itself. And that's when the child breathes for the first time. Even the Bible doesn't recognize the fetus as a human, and it even instructs on how to eliminate it preterm. So the Bible's position on abortion is pretty straightforward. But when you start using the Bible as the justification for political uh, for policy in our country, then you start to earn the ire of people like me. Where okay, who in where where are they actually doing that? What do you think? Who do you think managed to get the Dobbs decision pushed through? Who do you think? What the hell is the Dobbs decision? The overturning of Roe v. Wade. What's what's wrong with overturning Roe v. Wade? What's wrong oh, with women geez, having uh... the right to bodily autonomy? Well, it doesn't say you can't get an abortion. What? It just uh, it just basically kicked the responsibility back to the states. Uh huh. And so immediately, the the, the and immediately, those states started remove uh, twenty four to twenty five of them immediately started removing women's bodily autonomy because those states are predominantly religious and right wing. I mean that sucks. But it's not illegal everywhere. So, I mean, so why don't we do really this? Why don't we do the same thing? With, why don't we do the same thing with slavery? What do you mean? Why should it be a Why should it be a federal thing? Why shouldn't we just kick that back to the states? Slavery? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Forget the Thirteenth Amendment. Slavery for a was slavery was absolutely wrong. So it was absolutely wrong. So 
why don't women get bodily autonomy? It, I mean, a lot of the, a lot of our founding documents did have religious um, ideals. But your Bible doesn't mention abortion at all, at all, at all. Uh, yeah, I actually can't debate that. I don't know the scripture well enough. I, in I've been an ordained minister for over 20 years now. I can. The Bible does not talk about abortion at all. And the God himself is more than okay with killing children. Genocide of children happened directly by God and by God's commandment many times in the Bible. But beside that, the only instances of uh, instance of mentioning abortion in the Bible is the tale of the bitter water, which instructs the priest class on how to conduct an abortion if a woman was unfaithful to her husband and she was of uh, uh, she was bearing child. That is the only time the Bible mentions abortion is how to do one in case she's been a trifling hoe. I mean, I think regardless of your religious beliefs, I think it is a very tough call on as a look. And, and that's kind of the issue here. They don't have women deciding these things. There, there shouldn't be a man anywhere near that room when they're deciding what the hell to do as far as abortion rights. There shouldn't even be a man in the room. Why? So, I think I think if you had women deciding what time frame abortion should be um, allowed, you know, I think the numbers would look totally different. I think. But it's just kind of the way that it is that we have these, you know, old white dudes. There shouldn't be making decisions. non-medical personnel in the room. An abortion yeah. is a medical procedure. It is sure. medical. I don't care about the gender of the people involved. What I care is whether they believe an invisible man in the sky cares what they what they believe, and I care whether they're science they have any scientific foundation in what they are talking about. Because it is medical. Right. I mean, so when when do you think that it's a life? And it shouldn't be. There is no universal answer to that. See, this is the problem. It's with, so hard, right? No, it's not difficult at all. But the, the, the difficulty that you're having perceiving is that you see the world in a binary rather than what it is. That comes down to the medical professionals and the person bearing the child and the circumstances of the moment. And writing a magic piece of paper ahead of time prescriptively that can account for all of those vari uh, variables that human life accounts for is extraordinarily impossible. And attempting to do so is a fool's errand. So what you do is you leave it to fully qualified medical personnel and the person who has bodily autonomy over themselves to have an engaged conversation about this matter and make the decision between them because in no way, shape, or form should government be involved in that conversation. So, I mean, I, so I, I just don't understand where you stand on how, I mean, at what point is an abortion not an option anymore? It's not up to me. I'm in my 30s and I'm still course, hoping my mother does saying, it. There's, there's, like, there's, is there's legitimate, the there's legitimate medical reasons for a third trimester, a trimester abortion. They're exceedingly rare, of but they, they do exist. And, so yeah, why am I involved? So why am I involved in that conversation? That conversation belongs to the person who is with child and the doctor, right? It's the right, person like, who is the I'm, fetus. I'm just curious. Because that's what these, you know, that's what our state lawmakers have to have to deal with. They have to deal with that. No, they question. don't. They could just butt the fuck out. 
I mean, if they're making the laws... You don't have to make a law. You're acting like the law is some sort of required thing. They could have just let Rose stand and just gone with it. The fact of the matter is, if you want to kick it back to the states, well, then here's an idea. How about you do what the right wing is such big fans of? talking about small government and keeping government out of our lives and keep government out of our fucking lives. But instead, they're acting like this is an absolute necessity when the majority of Americans polled over decades all agree abortion should exist. And the majority of people agree it should be between a doctor and the person who is pregnant. Why are Republicans, the party of small government, insisting on government being in one of the most intimate places in a person's life, the bedroom and the doctor's office? Because broken religion and patriarchy. Those are the two reasons. Men want to be in charge of women's bodies and they have a magic text, a magic book that says they get to do so. That's their reason. That's their justification. That's why. But, so there, there are states where abortion is like banned. Abortion is illegal. Abortion is illegal. Um, however, there are medical instances where it is necessary, and those still. Those still happen. No, they don't. It's it's becoming so difficult, and people have already people have already died as a result of it. People have had to go out of state as a result of it. Fucking children. There's already an estimated north of two hundred twenty thousand children of sexual assault and rape that have been born because of the lack of abortions within those states. All right, these these. These exceptions that you talk about are not being applied because doctors have a chilling effect upon them because AGs like the Texas AG will absolutely not only go after you, they will go after your staff, they will go after the person who drove them to your office. That's how rabid these people are. Dang, that's pretty hardcore. A Texas woman, uh, a Texas woman just died of sepsis two days ago. Because she couldn't get the appropriate care. Yeah. They're, these states are literally talking about border checks and restricting the right to travel over this issue. Gambling's wow. illegal in your state probably, right? Or it's Yeah, I live in California. Okay. So gambling is a weird thing. It, there, you've got some places, right? But California right. doesn't stop you from coming over to here to Vegas, do they? No. You can fly to Vegas, you can drive to Vegas, you can gamble your ass away over here, you can win a bunch of money, and you can come back to California and spend that money, can't you? 100%. These Republican states are literally trying, active, and talking about. So three different degrees, but they are doing, they are actively doing, they are trying to do, or they are talking about doing, restricting people's right to travel over abortion. So you can't leave this state and get an abortion. If you do, we will issue a warrant for your arrest. A thing that is perfectly legal in another state. They are violating the interstate compact clauses in the constitution at that point. Yeah, that's that's kind of BS. Um I mean, they do the same thing at the border of uh California and Arizona where everybody has to stop at that check and it's they call it an agricultural checkpoint but who knows what they're actually looking for you know they're looking for a, a very particular fly that will decimate the um citrus crop in california that's what they're after they're are looking, you not kidding no i'm not kidding there it's a it's a citrus oh, okay check. yeah I, I, thought, I thought you were bullshitting me no. i'm sorry yeah that's, um, that's what they're I, after is they're after cit, uh, citrus fruit um that can bear a, a pest um, that will decimate the uh, the crop in California. It'd be a billion dollar loss for them. Yeah. Oh goodness gracious. Because um, yeah. I I do know that they ha they have their eye out for for illegals and stuff like that as well. Um, though they used to. I don't know what's going on now. 
I haven't been down in a while, but, but yeah. So, I mean, they do have borders for, for things. I think it's, uh, BS. I don't think they should be allowed to do that. It's, I believe it says we're allowed to travel wherever we want unmolested for any reason. So I, I don't know. So like in all of this is founded upon, look, I, I, I'd, I'd like to say, I don't mean to be, you know, diminutive or abusive about it, but the truth of the matter is, is that at, at my age, and in my circumstances, like I just don't have the patience left for anybody who identifies as a, as a Christian or even a religious person, really. They all get an equal – I'm an equal abuser when it comes to this thing. I don't give a shit if you're Hindu or Shinto. The fact of the matter is you believe woo-woo shit, all right? Um, that is the justification that is used in this nation for all of these regressive policies we are facing now. Right. You, you use the term illegals. What would Jesus have to say about the foreigner in a foreign land? Um, yeah, I don't even know. He wouldn't call him illegal, though, that's for sure. Mm, interesting. You shall not wrong or oppress an alien for you are aliens in the land of Egypt. You shall not oppress a hired worker who is poor and needy, whether he is one of your brothers or a foreigner residing in your city. You will pay his wages on that day before the sun sets, for he is poor and needs the money, lest he cry out against the Lord, and you are guilty of sin. Whether Give your member of a community a fair he hearing and judge rightly between one another, whether, whether citizen or alien. The alien who resides with you shall be as the citizen among you. You shall love the foreigner as yourself, as you were foreign in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. Cursed is anyone who withholds justice from the foreigner, the father, uh, fatherless, or the widow. You starting to see the point? Like, uh, kind of. Yeah. I, I still think that they they are here illegally what, so that is what what did what what about the God, laws of god and the laws of man part is confusing for you though the, no i understand that but well then this is america this is 2024 so you're everyone here should have to sign in so, so you're just you're you're just so i have the order right you're american first christian second Oh, uh, I mean, it shouldn't be that way, but it might be that way. Okay. Well, I just, I just want to get your, your allegiances straightened out because traditionally it's God first, then it's country. And I just want to make sure yeah, it was God, country. then country. Well, I... in this instance, you're demonstrating that it's country, then God. So I just, I really love America. So I if, really do. Well, then, then you you know, um, I, I hate to hate to be the bearer of bad news, my friend, but you may be cast into the uh, the eternal pits for this one. Um, the eternal pits. Yeah, this is this is this is the sort of stuff that uh, Jesus talked about. How like they may say they know me, but they do not. Right, right, right. So I mean, at least I'll be in good company, man. Hey, you know, as long as you're willing to risk it, that's fine. That's fine. Um, Risk it for the biscuit, man. We'll have some more, some more of these convos. But like, this is this is the sort of like you know, not very Christ-like. Um, fair, fair. No, I and I, I totally, I see that, you know. Um, and I understand that it's it's hard. Like, it is totally hard to live in a country right next to America, where you get to see all this. You know, you see all this cool stuff about Hollywood. And all that stuff. And it's right there. Like, it's right there. It's not even far away. I can go there. And people go, seeing that it's horrible. It's ho Have you ever been to Hollywood? Of course. I'm, I'm West Coast. Like, yeah. Oh, hell yeah. It's, it's you I know, it's terrible. Eh. It is. My, oh, guy, my guy, I have a different perspective than most uh, white guys walking around. A fun time for me is walking around the barrios. So... Like, yeah. I mean, of where? Oh, like uh, in Mexico? In Mexico, Puerto Rico, like, whatever. Okay. Yeah, I used to go to Ensenada all the time um, when I was a kid and stuff like that, but like, then they started, like, it's, killing people. It's, so. it, like, it's, I have a different perspective on things. As a, as a, as a world-weary anarchist, um, the concept of America I find offensive. 
Um, I find the idea of nation states and borders um, infantile. Uh, I find it uh, a form of regression that our species refuses to grow out of. Um, and generally, while I won't see it in my lifetime, I just bide my time and wait for the day that comes that, spe- that our species realizes that we are but one species on a singular, uh, singular unit of a planet and to stop subdividing it because we're stupid. I, I get that. I, I, at least I understand where you're coming from. Um, I feel like th- that exact issue is probably part of um, Americans today not using our our our, our facilities to our, our our best benefit. There there's a there's a a structure in which problems are solved. If you have an issue in your community, you go to your community. And back in the day when, you know, there was a huge church attendance, the church was that. You got to meet there. There was a bulletin board, and that bulletin board had a whole bunch of stuff. You needed a plumber. There was a plumber's card right there. And because you're Catholic too, they'll give you a hookup or whatever, you know. And that's just how things work. Um, And then if there's bigger issues, you know, that can go to your city and then bigger issues go to the county and then to the state and then you know but it seems like pe- people think that issues should just go straight up to the president so there's kind of no use for a you know a, a country segmented into states if nobody really gives a shit if you use it right it makes a lot of sense but you nobody gives a shit So, <laughs> am, am I crazy? I, look, the argument for just be totally honest. The, you know? argu- the argument comes from a positionality that we can see your bias and the, the defaults to the church, and we would prefer to reclaim those spaces simply as the commons. But I understand how you're seeing it, and the sort of st- the categorization and stratification and scaling that you're you're viewing as. Um, I can see your your position at least. Um, I would I would argue that while that was the commons for some people, a lot of people were being actively excluded, right? And so it it uh, becomes hugely problematic as an example of a, a communal commons in which people can. Uh, a petition for assistance when they are actively discriminating against segments of the population simultaneously. Um, are you talking about the like the church example? Sure. Yeah. Well, I just mean I mean that that could happen anywhere. It could be at the public pool. There's a bulletin board for an electrician, and you say you tell them, "Hey, I saw your, I saw your your." your card on the bulletin board at the swimming pool, you know, it doesn't have to be a church. It, you know, but back in the day, there was a lot more, um, community areas. Obviously technology well, wasn't but like it is today. That's, so, that's a problem you know. with capitalism. Capitalism has made things very cushy. Mm, has nothing to do with cushy. It is everything to do with, uh, the dissolution and privatization of the commons. The places that you're talking about don't exist anymore because they were privatized. Like I'm talking about a public pool. Yeah, a church. I, okay, a church, but a public pool. I mean, the churches are a for-profit industry if there ever was, and they are exclusionary on top of that. Yeah, um, some of them are extremely profitable, but it's sad. There's a lot of them that are just dying. They were always for-profit. Um, but the, the, of course, if look, if people are going to be bringing them money and they don't have to claim it, um, you know, the, they're going to be, uh, the, the Lord is really blessing us. But the <laughs> Trump $60 Bible, um, the, uh, the ultimately the commons has been stolen by capitalism. The things that we used to take for granted are ever increasingly being policed and privatized. And so 
the things that were once free spaces to just use now have regulations and rules and police. And if we're, if we're lucky, if we still have them in the public commons for that, otherwise they've already been privatized and sold off like our public transportation systems, like our road networks, like our, like our, like our, right? Industry capture has happened at every level. And so ultimately what you're, you're left with is paying for things. You want to use a pool? You buy a gym membership that has, uh, to a, a gym that has a pool. You want your kids to learn how to swim? You go to the swim school. It's like that. Everything's been privatized. Everything costs money. Uh, that, I mean, there is obviously, you know, benefits and drawbacks to that. The benefits being? I mean, just like in any system. So I can head your mind off at the pass. I'm an anarchist, not a communist. I don't like them as much as I don't like capitalists. I have equal problems. What are the benefits to privatizing a public pool? I, I don't see one. What's, what's the benefit to privatizing parking? Oh, God. See, you're hitting close to home. I ha the parking tickets I have are... It would make you weep. Um, yeah, I mean... Look, if you... I, I can understand. If, if, you, if you owned a small plot of land right by a truck stop and you just decided to pave the thing, put lines on it, and pay and, you know, have truckers pay for overnight parking. You know, if you want to capitalize on your property, there's nothing wrong with that. Is it, or is it exploitative? I mean, of course it is. So there is something wrong with it. The thing is, it's, I, I, I think it would only be exploitative if someone is getting basically boned in this situation. If you're a trucker and you're tired and you need somewhere to park. So you have no other 15 choice. bucks or whatever. So you have, you have no other choice in the matter. That's even worse I exploitation. Mean, maybe. Maybe you don't. And maybe you're pissed off at the guy. But maybe that 15 bucks or whatever it is to park is the best $15 to ever spend. Or we could have not privatized the land in the first place and realized as a, as a society and a community that there was a need for parking for over, uh, overland trucking in that area and accommodated it in the first place with oh, proper so yeah, planning. That, that should be happening as well. I'm, you know, but so, they, I have so seen that where there is a parking lot. So it's what it is, is the privatization of a public good that then engages in an exploitative activity for a thing that we deem socially necessary. Because we need those truckers, right? We need that. We need them right. move goods. So we have a social need that we have, and we refuse to address the needs of that thing. And then we allow a private citizen to engage in an exploitative process, uh, practice on top of that. So the only, the only way that things become privatized is if somebody owns it, right? If it's, I if it's the government, I, then, it's a, then it's a public thing. I introduce right? you to a very old, very common anarchist train of thought. Property is theft. Bum, bum, bum. I know. So what does that actually mean? The removal of objects from the commons means that ultimately you are stealing them from the current and future generations who would have inherited them by default. The easiest example for you to wrap your head around this concept 
Yeah. Americans are super, super attached to this concept. So it's usually pretty easy to get it across to them. The concept of our national park system. Okay. You like those, don't you? They're pretty cool, right? Yeah. It's a pretty, oh, yeah. it's a pretty based idea we had. Let's, let's take this, this like wilderness, these, these marvels of nature and just put a thing around them and say, look, this is for all of us. We all benefit right. from this existing. We all benefit from this continuing to exist without fucking it up. Right? Right. Why is that difficult of a concept to understand then? Then why is the land being privatized? Why are the water rights being privatized? Why is water being purchased by Nestle? This is theft. Property is theft. You're stealing from the in commons. That, in that instance, absolutely. You're stealing yeah. from the public commons in order to enrich a handful of private citizens. It's theft. Right. If we've already deemed that area a no-go for any sort of um, any sort of any construction or anything like that. No, it doesn't matter then if we, why would we allow anybody it, to come in and take it a part of it? Well, it doesn't matter if we did previously or not. The thought process continues to exist. It doesn't matter if the – look, the government of Nazi Germany said it was fine to exterminate Romani, Jews, queers, mentally disabled people. That was legal. That was legal. Right. The government it said mandatory. it was cool. Do it. We're doing it. All right. Right. hundred mm -hmm. percent. But everybody else looked at that and said, you know, that's pretty fucked up actually. Right. Yeah. Just because we make it legal doesn't make it right. Absolutely. So just because a land speculator gets to drive up housing costs in a city doesn't make that okay. So when somebody breaks into that apartment building and starts sw setting up squats in those unused, overpriced apartments, I say good because you didn't have the right to use that land in the first place. Hmm. What would Jesus do? Would Jesus? I just feel like we wouldn't have anything. Would Jesus sit by? And let a building be empty because of speculative rent prices? Or would he kick down that door and start feeding people? See, that, that is a huge issue. And, you know, I, I'm in Southern California. The homeless issue is so, it's so bad. I can't even. And yet we have more I than enough houses in, in this country to house the unhoused. It's not a shortage of housing. It never has been. Not once. Right. No, I, I pay ridiculous rent. I know. I totally know. So think about what Jesus would do. Think about the, the cleansing of the temples. Think about how he reacted. You as a Christian recognize that it's all God's house, right? God is everywhere. God is everything. You carry the church See, within. But I you. also, I also put myself into other people's shoes, and you know, I'm, I'm looking at someone else's house. I don't think that that's my house. I don't. Are they using it actively? You know. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, no, no. If that house is sitting empty, is it being used? See, this is the but difference. It wouldn't be. You this, know, like this I guess this because is... things actually belong to people that I can't, ah, I can't this is the difference this is the here. difference between private and personal property personal property are the things that you actively occupy and utilize your toothbrush your car the land you that you occupy the f farm that you farm the house that you live in these are pr these are personal property private property is that manufacturing space. Private property is the series of apartments you don't live in. Private property is all of the stuff that you are renting out or what we refer to as the rentier class that you're making money off of but that you do not actively utilize yourself. 
that's private property. Personal property, I have no problem with. Have at it, man. If you're using that house, that's your house, man. You're living in it. Nobody has the right to just walk into your fucking house. Now, if that house is sitting vacant just because you're not happy with the rent prices, dude, set up, set up a squat there. If, that ha- if you're renting out that apartment complex to people, congratulations. That's not your property. That's their property. They're the ones living there. So you said you live in Vegas? Yes. Imagine you had a, a just a, a separate house in it doesn't matter, Utah. It doesn't matter. I would right? never be a landlord. Never. I find I'm, I what find I'm it saying is imagine dis- detestable. To have a, a second dwelling? If I found if I found that uh somebody in need set up residence there, would I be pissed about it? No. No. I would understand. I'd be like, yeah, I get that. Yeah. But then, I mean, but what do you do about your equity? I mean, what do you do? Why are you putting the dollar above humans? See, this is this is the problem. This is the problem I have with I, I, all I modern mean, because Christians. If, if you've worked for something, then you absolutely deserve it. There's no, there's no. That's what makes America so great. You can have mm. whatever you want, and you that's, wanted that second that's, house. That's in Wall, Utah. That's Wall Street mentality. No, that was you, proudly radical. You wanted that second house in Utah, right next to that. Yeah, except <laughs> ice cream except spot. I because that ice cream's the best. Except I am ethically consistent and I would never do that. You're being completely genuine. You wouldn't give no. a crap if someone was in your path. I would understand it completely. Yeah. I'd walk in and have a conversation and be like, you know, hey, just so you know, my name's on the fucking paperwork, but like you know, do you need, what do we need to get this? Like, do you, do you want to like work towards something? Are you good? Do you, do you know any communal resources? I'd hook them up with food, not bombs, make sure they're eating right. Yeah. Yeah. I've been in See, Okay. And that, that, like, that's fair. That's fair. However, and this is happening like all over the place. What if you, what if you try to get in touch with this person and they're totally hostile and they're, you know, totally willing to fight over this place that they've deemed their castle. They don't need to fight me. That's you see. That's the thing. Is they don't need to fight me. Do you look for the I fight? Just, I, I just find that so baffling. Like I would, it, 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 if I was is, your friend, I would run in there and rip those people that's, out. That's great and all. But like, this is the joke that atheists have in modern day America about how if Jesus came back today, Christians would fucking absolutely like call him a terrorist, deny him entry at the border, like lock him up in jail. Modern Christians would not understand Christ. Like you legitimately can't comprehend a position that Christ would occupy. It baffles you. And yet you ascribe your ideology to his namesake. Like, this is the namesake of what you identify as. And it is, at a very core level, baffling to you. This is the thing to which you identify. But when confronted with it in reality, you're lost. This is exactly what Christ preached. And when confronted with Christianity, you're confused by it. Yeah, on that level of Christianity, I cannot, like, I, can, I literally cannot compute. This is basically the position of every anarchist. And we don't, we're no gods, no masters. We don't believe in Jesus. We don't believe in God. But at the end of the day, we share a lot of positions with Christ. And... It's interesting for us, at least, as individuals, um, when we encounter Christians, because so often, more often than not, we confuse you because we behave like Christ. 
it's a very strange position to be put in for us to be like, how are we more Christ-like than the people who say we want to live our lives like Christ? I, yeah, man, that person needed a house. Housing is a human right. Who am I to deny a person their right? That's a th fundamental to be hu being human. You need a house. You need a roof over your fucking head. And I wasn't using it. And they needed it. Of course. Mm. Use it. Yeah. I mean, I guess I could say it, it robs that person of that aha moment. Did Jesus put stipulations upon healing the sick? No, no, he didn't. Did he put stipulations upon feeding the hungry? No, he, he didn't do that either, I don't think. No. <laughs> oh, man. No. It's, it, it's really weird. Like, I, I, I think you appreciate it. Like, most of them don't. It's really fucking weird for the rest of us when we talk to Christians. And none of you are Christ-like. None of you behave as Christians are supposed right. to. It's really right. I mean, and no one weird. is going to be nope. no one is going to be Christ-like. But you know, it, in that sense. Well, nobody's saying you have to be Christ. We're saying Christ-like. Well, that is of, that is the that is technically the goal. Well, but is anyone going to try though? You know, It'd be nice to see but, some attempts. It, is anyone going to try though? It'd be nice to see some attempts. Go ahead. See, and it's it it's hard. Life is life is different for every single one of us. But it, yes, life is hard, and so a person who's squatting in your second house. Your instinctual reaction is to go on the offensive. And it's like, clearly this Absolutely. person, clearly this person's well, life that's, that's is because harder of the American than mine. In me as well. well, you know, there maybe, maybe we're, they, uh, we're allowed our property. Well, but maybe, maybe Christ was right and America is wrong. Yeah, maybe like probably so. Maybe take that on board. Let, let me ask you a question, just as a, as, as a, as a pastor, right? Right? As a minister. Absolutely. When's the last time you sat down and read the Bible? I've actually been uh, reading a little bit more recently, but as of recently, like, it's been forever. Maybe. Go if, you, I, if you would have asked me a month and a half ago, it, it would have been probably a year and a half. And, and have you ever, like, actually read it cover to cover? Completely, yes, but there's so much to it that I definitely was just blasting through books, trying to get it done more than mm. trying to understand. It, see, you know what I mean? See, rather than just trying to consume it, right, maybe it's time to... Yeah, there's too much to just maybe, do that. Maybe it's time you to, just... like, digest it, right? Like For sure. Maybe maybe some of the, the, the primary Gospels would be a good place to start, right? Some of the stuff that Matthew had to say, right? Um, Acts. Uh, I, I know Acts is in a primary Gospel, but, like, you know, Acts and Luke definitely had a lot to say about wealth and riches and how people come about them and how they feel about them. Matthew and John and James definitely had a lot to say about people who say they are Christians, that say they love Christ, that say they follow this, but really don't. And what the sort of ramifications of that are, you know, like, yeah, maybe, maybe a little Acts, maybe a little Luke, you know, Matthew, John, James, that sort of territory would be good for your soul. Because America's a pretty fucked up toxic place. And a lot of what we do may be normal, right? But that doesn't make it right. And 
I I think the Bible's goofy woo woo bullshit. But if the Bible can make somebody stand in the line, like here in Vegas, when the city council tried to uh, make it illegal, they functionally did. We had to take it to fucking court. But when they made it illegal to uh, feed homeless people in the park, right? Food not bombs. I heard about that. Food not bombs always goes out anyway, right? fucking whatever man it's a bunch of anarchists we already don't recognize your authority over us all right you could kick rocks whatever do what you gotta do nazi fuck but we're gonna feed people who are hungry right there is only one minister in this town i literally say she you know the the baptist minister because she was standing shoulder to shoulder with us feeding those people right that's because she knew her. She knew her book. She knew her her God. She knew that. Yeah, that, that's wrong. Look, I I understand the whole like don't feed the animals, you know, way of thinking. But th- dude, these people, something has to be done. This is outrageous. The amount of people. Well, but that's but that's it's all an extension of this sort of capitalist, corporate, nationalistic, tribalistic. In group, out group thought process. It, it very much is. It's I have mine, fuck them. It's you don't have the magic paper, so you don't count. Right? And all of this is just made up stuff. It's stuff we made up along the way. It's games that you and I are playing as human beings. Right. And we change the rules. And it's very much like Calvin Ball, if you know what Calvin Ball is. Right? I have no idea what that is. It's Calvin and Hobbes. It's a comic, uh, comic strip. But Calvin Ball was a game that Calvin, the titular character, played. And the rules of Calvin Ball were whatever Calvin said they were. Okay. And they could change at any given moment. Any given moment in in play, if you scored a if you scored a touchdown or you ran the bases, Calvin could change the rules on you on the fly, because. He was playing Calvin Ball and you were playing Calvin Ball, right? That's how it, right. that's how it works in our society. The rules yeah. the rules can fucking change on a dime. Right. The goalposts are constantly moving. And that's supposed to be at least the thing about the religious tenets. I, again, I think it's bullshit, not just from a historical fact, but the fact that it is subjective and it is it is relative and you guys change it all the time too. But that was supposed to be the gig with religion is that it transcends the laws of man. And no matter what you say, our stuff like, you know, takes precedence. And it's like, well, then how come I see pastors with like G6 jets and shit? Why, why, why? Yeah, am I, that's, that's outrageous. Why am I seeing churches close their doors to the hungry and the houseless? Why am I seeing Christians yell about illegals? These are not Christian concepts. They just aren't. The idea that God made Americans is not in the Bible. God made man, not Americans. So, like, this is just some, some hard truths that most Christians don't want to actually confront themselves with because it takes some real, real self-analysis, some soul-searching. To be like, how can I believe so, qu- somebody question. is illegal? Go ahead. Question. What, what's, uh, f- I guess, from an anarchist's point of view, why is America so bad? Authoritarian power like what's structures. A better, what's a better country than America? No, 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 no. I, we don't believe in countries. I, I come from the standpoint that, like, America is the greatest place on earth to live. How? Okay, so one, we don't believe in nation states. So that's, like, sort of, like, are you, it's asking for, like, what's our best version of the thing that we don't, we think is the problem. Okay. Right? Like, what's, okay. the, what's the best cancer? Right. None? Right. None would be the best answer yeah, to that exactly. question. Yeah, Um. But let me follow that up with why do you think we're the best? By what metric, what objective metric do you measure that? The, uh, well, we have way more freedoms 
than almost every other country. That's just metricably not true. What what freedoms do we possess that Norway does not? Um, I I'm not entirely sure, but I don't think that Norway has totally free speech. Oh, I was gonna say he's gonna say freedom of speech. Freedom. I of believe speech. there is some speech that you can be jailed for and such. There's speech here you can be jailed for. It, technically, right? Like, um, just <laughs> technically correct. And, the best know, kind of, of correct. And such. Um. But other than that, I mean, or so I'm not. I'm not totally sure on on Norwegian law. Well, but but uh, I don't think they have full, full blown hardcore freedom of speech. Uh, freedom of expression is a uh, prerequisite for a functioning democracy where all members of society have access to information and can participate in social and political life. It is an enabler of other human rights, such as freedom of assembly, freedom of religion or belief. Promoting freedom of expression is a key priority in Norway's foreign policy and internal policy development. Freedom of they have freedom of expression. We don't have freedom of expression. So again, Americans like to believe that we have this like pile of freedoms that nobody else has, but they never visited anyplace else. Is usually the most hilarious part of that. Is <laughs> yeah, I've never been to Norway. Yeah. Um. So like, just just like that's I pulled Norway. I could have pulled you know, any number of countries like, um, if, if we were just going for like pure unadulterated well, ability to do a, stuff without like the government fucking with you. Um, and now if, if I can, if I can, you know, have America's back a little bit, what about, um, the second amendment? Do they have anything like that? Can they have guns? Uh, most places actually have firearm ownership and they have restrictions upon it to one degree or another. Just like we do, actually. This is this is, is it what, like Canada, though, where you can't like hold your gun in your own house. You have to no, keep it at like a police. Station. No, that's like Switzerland is that sort of territory. Um, no, God, that's, that's so terrible. But that's not. But again, we have restrictions upon it as well. This is this is this is of the, course. It, like is one of those things that like Americans like to think they have unabashed, unrestricted freedoms, and it's like, dude, what about? the right to housing what about the right to life what about the right to health care what about the right to an education what about the right to due process <laughs> what about the right to like there's a lot of stuff fundamental stuff that we are kind of fucked on like properly fucked up on that see but i don't think there's another country that has what we have which is you i mean you said norway but i don't think norway has all the rights that we have i don't believe that i don't think so such as what rights I'm, god i i don't know there's got to be some something that they can't do that we can see but here's here's the fact that the fact that you can't produce anything right this is evidence alone. You believe America is the best country in the world with zero 100%. evidence to, to substantiate that. You just feel it. You've been indoctrinated oh, to believe you it. You've been, going. you've been propagandized. Oh, yeah. Woo. So Ooh, without actually, without, without verifying any of this data, Without visiting any of these other places, like 198 other fucking places you could have gone to to just check up on any of this, right? Without knowing. See, what, what, okay, without so give me another country. <laughs> the Netherlands. What, why all these Nordic ass? What about Brazil? What, <laughs> like, what, what about, about Brazil? Uh, what about Brazil? Okay. We are Brazil. What about Brazil? Wow, he, we are really definitely Brazil. better off than Brazil. We have much more rights than they do. What rights do we have that Brazil doesn't? I don't think they can have weapons. I don't think. Oh, I mean, they okay. fucking do, but I don't think. Oh, I, I, I shouldn't say that. I believe that they do, but I don't. Uh, 
I don't think they're allowed to. Uh, actually, Firearm has recently seen a firearm ownership boom. Um, yeah, it looks like we're selling a shit ton of weapons down there legally. Makes um, sense. Yes, the uh, since 2018, the number of guns in private hands doubled. Good, but again, what rights does Brazil have uh, not have that we do? <laughs> okay, okay, you might have totally, totally got me. I don't, I don't know uh, a lot of uh, other countries in there and their. What they can and so, cannot do. So, what do you have to substantiate your firm, your firm belief that America is the best country in the world by a margin, by like a long shot, by a by a huge yeah. So it it does it does come down to our our military might. Um, so we. So because we're an empire, you believe we're the best. Man, we're we're pretty big and bad. So your definition of the best person in the room is the one who is the most violent and willing to hurt people. No. So why is that the your definition of the best country? The No, no, no. The biggest and baddest dude in the room he ranks supreme. What are you going to do about it? Why does that make him the best? Because he says so. <laughs> I mean, so what your are you entire do about it? your entire worldview is based upon violence. Sort of. I mean, in a way, yeah, I'll agree. Yeah, in a way. So let me just remind you: you self-identify as a Christian. Correct. You believe that the gentle carpenter who willingly went to the cross to die for man was the worst guy in the room. Because the Romans that crucified him would be the best guys in the room. Huh. I see what you mean. I see what you did there. I see what you did there. And in that instance, they, the Romans do rank supreme. They are the biggest. They are the baddest. So... Uh, I mean, they were in Rome, so it does go to show that they were the best. So the guy... Who's the foundation for your entire worldview? Got killed by the country that you would identify as the best. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't mean it was right, obviously. You know, um, so, I'm sure so, America has done some pretty heinous stuff. So, and we're bigger than the Romans have ever been. So, do you think that maybe we should revisit the the term best and that maybe a more nuanced yeah, idea maybe, maybe right i maybe agree strongest maybe maybe one with the most military might no you know what the more you say different stuff the more i go back to the best i think they're the best so okay I, I mean, I'm just being real. I'm just not. I'm not going to lie. I don't care. So I'll be totally honest. Your definition of what makes a country best has nothing to do with the quality of life for its citizens. It has nothing to do with equality or uh, a sense of justice amongst themselves or how they treat the least amongst them. Your your entire qualifier the quality to which you identify a nation state as being the best within your rankings, your hierarchy is simply their military might. Man, that's a huge part of it. Um, but no, I, I think um, basically all of those other issues are highly important 
But uh, as far as... But secondary to being able to blow up a brown kid halfway across the globe. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm sure you agree with me. No. You say it like it's crazy, but... Yeah, you, it's, it is ba- it's bad shit serious. insane. Like, it's legitimately if bad you, shit insane. Look, now, let's let's just... As an example, the fact you that he actually thinks you have, have you to live agree with him is really the best country really in the world. Me. Imagine you do. It has all the things. Everything runs exactly the way Proudly Radical wants it to run. Right? My name is Kai, by the way. Kai? Kai. Correct. Like K-A-I? Correct. Right on. Um, now imagine <laughs> there's another country mm-hmm. that comes to take it. Okay. But the military didn't make me what's best. What made me best was the fact that I took care of everybody I could take care of. The fact that I had justice and equality and equity within my system. That military that allows me to defend those values is a useful tool, but in no way, shape, or form does it make me the best. What made me the best was all those other qualities. Maybe, but it's completely all for nothing if you can't defend it. Like Jesus did? Uh, he was on a mission. He, had a, he was on a mission. And you're not? That fool had something to do. I'm sorry? And you're not? Man, not the same way. I think we can both agree... Maybe he had that, a lot of stuff on his plate. Maybe that's maybe that's the maybe that's the problem with today's Christians. Is that oh for sure? Look, I, look. In order for in order for you know anything to be genuine, I believe the Lord had to give us free will, complete and utter free will. So when people say, how could you be a Christian when there's so much evil in the world? It makes total sense to me that the Lord gave every single one of us free will to do whatever we want. And that dude woke up and chose violence. You know, it is what it is. Except be gay. But everyone, everyone is their own entity. I think you at least understand, at least I can make you understand in this instance. The reason I'm an anarchist, well, there's many reasons, but one of the things that makes me an anarchist is the understanding and willingness to dissect these power dynamics that you find yourself trapped in. My complaint with Soviet Russia is the same complaint with capitalist America. It's authoritarian or hierarchical power structures. It's the fact that one person places themselves above another person. That they create these vertically stacked power structures that allow somebody to exert pressure downward. And then that creates a system of abuse. You can absolutely you can corrupt that infinitely at that point. Totally. Same same problem both places. Your distribution of economics, your resource distribution therein could be done equitably and with uh, with equality across the board if your power structures were heterarchically conforming and uh, so horizontal rather than vertical uh, were heterarchically conforming and took these uh, took equality and equity into account right and things like a military industrial complex that is a globe spanning empire that can wipe the oh, yeah. planet off the face of the earth if they so chose with the flick of a switch, right? Is right. antithetical to ever achieving justice within anything. There's no way that those two systems can coexist, they just can't. So, all of the problems that America has will continue to exist. And continue to foment and continue to fester 
so long as our system allows for such things to occur in the first place. It is a symptom. The fact that we have the military industrial complex in the first place is a symptom of the disease of this place and of this people. There's a reason that other places didn't create the military industrial complex. It was born of us. It's different than just a military. What we have is a different thing. It's a different beast. We integrated our capitalist economic system with our military system and made them a unified unit. And you now have a profit incentive to go to war. That's what that thing is. Every, every Patriot missile delivered is $1.2 million in sale. That's not even, sh that's not even dropped. That's not no, I, I, that, you're totally right. It, that is outrageous. I mean, it's one of our biggest exports is weapons. So that thing that you identify as the thing that makes us the best, I, th I say is one of the most horrific things ever on this planet. Weapons? Like, the military industrial complex as a whole. Okay. The mere okay. Existence. And, and honestly, that's that's a totally fair assumption. Honestly, it's so off the rails, the, um, the, and it's it's totally corrupt. There's no way for it not to be corrupt. It is of a corrupt system. You sh you shall know them. Uh, you shall know the tree by the uh, tree by the fruits it bears. Right. Yeah. No, you're right. From its very, it, the whole point of it is to be essentially corrupt. So. The thing that you point to that says, that you say makes us the best, I say is a walking human rights violation and would make Christ weep. Maybe, but, you know, other countries buy that stuff and we need, we, and we replenish our own stock. You know, there's supply or there's demand. That's you know, same, there might as well be you know, supply. You know, that's the same thing that crack dealers say. Ah, yeah, that's true too. Hey, man. If there's demand. So, just saying, morally, right now, you're at the level of a crack dealer who's destroying his own neighborhood with his own product because somebody else is going to sell it. So you might as well get that bag. Dude, it's an unfortunate reality, but what do you, I mean, what would you recommend for that, for that gentleman to do? Just so Christian. Um, I would recommend for him to pursue another avenue and worry about himself and his community more than he's worrying about his pocketbook. Because you might be surprised. There might not be another person who steps in. Maybe you've created a self-fulfilling prophecy for yourself and your community. Because isn't everybody else just racing to keep up with us? Look Honestly, at, kind of. Look at Russia. Look at China. Look at any of the powers that you want to name drop. Who are they constantly racing to keep up with militarily? It's not. You no. Know? It's not them in the lead that we're trying to keep up with to defend ourselves. We're the threat. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess the world is lucky that we have <laughs> we have this awesome military. Are they? I mean, it's a lot better than uh, other countries having this stuff. So, it could be worse. Sure, she's got an abusive husband, but, you know, uh, Susan down the street, her husband cut off one of her fingers. So, I mean, she, you know, Lisa has it, kind, she kind of has it good. I mean, sure, she's living with an abusive husband, but she's not, she doesn't have it as bad as Susan. It's kind of a fucked up statement, right? 
I would agree. Yeah. I would also agree that Lisa has all of her digits, so she should be thankful. No, I'm kidding. It's... Are you the... It is an interesting position to be uh, to be an anarchist in this world. Um, I can see that. It, it's it's it, given our lens of analyses and our tools that we have at our disposal, ideologically, philosophically, and organizationally, we tend to look around, and it's it's interesting to see how wrong people can get it time and again. Um, Right. I feel like you would naturally kind of cut through the, just trim the fat and cut through the BS almost right away. It's since you don't have a filter of a lot of different things. Yeah. You don't care. I don't believe in the nation state. I don't believe in nationalism. The flag means literally nothing to me. The church means nothing to me. All those books mean nothing to me. Like at the end of the day, all of these things are just, extra work that other people have to like try and see through. Whereas an anarchist just sits here and goes, okay, so that person is exerting a lot of power on that person and that person has no recourse. So clearly the scales are balanced, uh, like are tipped in that direction, right? Like that's not difficult to see. That person is oppressing, coercing, and exploiting that person. Pretty simple dynamic to read when you don't have to involve things like race, gender, Right, like when you can just do the intersectional analysis and go, okay, so that person is this, 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 this and that person, da, 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 da. and the U.S. is a bully. The U.S. is a bully. If the U.S. was a kid in the schoolyard, we as adults would look at that kid, if you're a properly adjusted adult, right, or even a mildly well-adjusted adult, you'd look at that kid and go, mm-hmm. fuck that kid. That kid's a shithead. Like he's that the Amer uh, the U S is the you know f- like fourth grader who looks like he's already got a bit of a mustache coming in who's you know oh, fuck, yeah. nine inches over everybody else and it right. outweighs them by thirty five forty pounds and is just now adversely you know you could say look at that kid he's a total dick or you could say you know that kid's got a promising defensive lineman you know career ahead of him. except what's he doing with his power he's got a kid who can't defend himself face in the sand I mean, who what nation do we do that to oh my god okay so i'm gonna recommend a book right now killing hope by william bloom uh william bloom okay killing hope it is the u.s military and cia interve- intervention since world war ii and it is just some just some of the fucked up stuff that we do around the world assassin oh, yeah. assassinations coups that sort of thing so <clears throat> oh we do the best to, so fucked up to stuff. answer your question who's whose face do we have in the sand China, Italy, Greece, the Philippines, Korea, Albania, Eastern Europe, Germany, Iran, Guatemala, Costa Rica, Syria, the Middle East again, Indonesia, Western Europe, British Guyana, Soviet Union, late, Italy, Vietnam, Cambodia, Laos, Haiti, Guatemala, France, Algeria, Ecuador, the Congo, Brazil, Peru, Dominican Republic, Cuba, Indonesia, Ghana, Uruguay, Chile, Greece, Bolivia, Guatemala, Costa Rica, Iraq, Australia, Angola, Zaire, Jamaica, Seychelles, Grenada, Morocco, Suriname, Libya, Nicaragua, Panama, uh, Panama, Bulgaria, Iraq, Afghanistan, El Salvador, Haiti, and there you go just 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 some of our highlights is that all of the countries do you just tell me all of the countries no but it's it's a good chunk of them right it's my god it's a good chunk and that's what so i would love to know how we have you know china's head in the sand or the soviet union's head in the sand oh my god I mean, at we, least, we, and I'm sure you can probably agree uh, that you military know, at least superiority it doesn't look like that. We bankrupted. There is we a lot of uh, panic. The Soviet Union. The, I mean, there's a ton of panic um, that you know China can can invade. You know, there, there there's people who genuinely think that China is war with China is on the horizon. They are they are quite literally surrounded by our bases. Good. How would you feel if the roles were reversed? 
Pretty freaked out, huh? I would honestly think like, hey, man. You think that would, somebody's coming for you? I should probably not launch missiles into Taiwan. You, 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 if we were surrounded by Chinese bases, you'd probably think to yourself that China's coming for you, right? I might. Yeah, it's funny. It's funny how when the roles are reversed, Americans don't consider that sometimes. But the thing is, I would way rather the U.S. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, be surrounding and, me than, and, and you know. I, as an anarchist who politically has been persecuted since the you know late 1800s, early 1900s, depending on how you want to do this measure, right? Um, killed, rounded, assassinated, uh, murdered by police, by the state. Um, I, as a gay man who um, has been persecuted by this country's uh, uh, predominant religion, um, as a person who's had a shit ton of uh, like black boyfriends and friends who are people of color, and just I live in Las Vegas, man, Arizona, and then Las Vegas. I've known a lot of a lot of Latino people, right? As a person who's paid the fuck attention, I gotta tell you, uh, there's a lot of people who would step up and be like, you know what? Um, I'm not cool with them, but I'm not cool with you either. Like just because they're dickheads doesn't make you not dickheads. And like the argument that I'd rather have the U S doesn't hold a lot of water for a good chunk of the population because the U S has been yeah, pretty no, shitty to a lot of people. Be the perfect answer. Yeah. So, you know, um, but I mean, if, if the world, if the roles were reversed, I couldn't imagine. I couldn't imagine. Yeah. So it's 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 an interesting thing that Americans sort of talk themselves into this corner. Meanwhile, they are the imperial core. Our empire spans the globe. Like, do you do you have a Spanish military base down the street from you? No, God no. Yeah, you know who has an American military base down the street from them? The Spanish. And the French, and the Germans, and the British, and, 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 and. We have so many military bases that when the military needed to find out where all their bases were, they went to a professor because they weren't sure where they all were. That's quite impressive. Okay. Don't even start telling him about Australia. That's how fucky our empire is. How absurdly big it is, is it's not even sure how big it is. We have spanned the globe. And that's like, that's, that's the thing that you identify as the thing that makes us best. Is this terrifying machine that we built that is a, a rabid dog in our yard that we have chained yeah. up. And other countries use us for that dog. They like that dog. How does that make us best, though? I mean, if you had the coolest toy on the whole street and all the kids wanted to play with it, you'd be the best. That toy kills other kids. That toy does, yeah. But it, this toy that I'm talking about is nice and fluffy. It doesn't do that. But no, um, yeah. We're talking about a toy that murders. But they want to use it. Okay, but how does that <laughs> you make know? A, how does that make us best? There has to be some sort of order in the world. There has to be. See, in this, this is where modern Christians this is the one area that they actually hang their hat on. They won't go to bat for the homeless. They won't go to bat for the hungry. They won't go to bat for foreigners. They won't go to bat for anything else. But what they will hang their hat on loud and proud is that the world requires a hierarchy because they see that God, priest, man hierarchy and they insist upon it. They can't conceive of any other organizational structure because they've never experienced it. What would my hierarchy look like? As near, Just from your observation. As near as I can tell, uh, America, I, America, money, then maybe some vague religious beliefs, 
I, uh, well, actually, it would be America Money Self Church. Yeah, I think you put yourself above the church as well. Are hierarchies necessarily like a bad thing always? They will inevitably corrupt. Yep. Yeah. It will always lead to an abuse of power. It's just an inevitability. Well, we, then there's nothing to be done. Sure there is. There's nothing we can do. Sure there is. Organize yourselves differently. Like what? You don't need a hierarchy. Well, I, no, I just, I just mean on a, on a, gra- on a huge scale. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. If there's a gigantic population of people, there needs to be some sort of rules, or shit's going to go to chaos oh, so okay. fast. So, so are you? Fi- See, this is, this is one of those things. Um, are you aware that anarchy doesn't mean chaos? It actually, um, it, sure, it derives. Yeah, from, actually, oh, chaos it's been a long time is, since is we've like, gotten you know, here. The, the, the Greek god chaos, right? No, uh, that's where that comes it, from. It comes from anarchos. An, it, it's Greek. An means without. Arcos means ruler. It means without rulers, not without rules. Anarchism. Okay. Is, no, I, I had no idea. Anarchism is a highly structured organizational method. And there's multiple schools of thought within, uh, within that as well. It's a network of ideas. But functionally speaking, there's all sorts of things and iterances and organizations in the world that already demonstrate that the anarchist method of organizing themselves absolutely works. You don't need these hierarchical structures. You can engage in hierarchical structures. You can engage in distributed topologies of uh, of organization, and you can use delegative uh, delegative stru- uh, rep- uh, delegative representation rather than re- you know representative democracy in order to get around that. Yeah, but right there, with delegates, no, they can be you're recall- putting your they can be recalled at any given time and your vote can be recalled at any given time away from one of their votes. So you delegate your vote as a collective uh, a group to a person. But if any time that person is, in going, is going to engage in a vote that you do not wish, you can, uh, you can vo- cast your vote as a, singu- uh, a singular person. So they clearly uh, – they, they simply are uh, a person who's casting a group of votes. And if you want to recall them as a collective, you can recall them instantaneously at any given time. They are not above you. They are simply doing a job for you. Which makes I mean, that's the work. way that our no, system is supposed to work no, as well. It no, it isn't. Ours is a representative uh, system and does not ever – was never intended to function that way. Oh, what, what were you saying? I'm sorry. What was the difference? Uh, ours never – was intended to work that way. They have election cycles. There's an elect, uh, electoral college that has to go through. There's a House of Lords in the form of the Senate that uh, that, uh, that is essence, essentially the landed gentry. In no way, shape, or form does that it, it repre- uh, does that even resemble uh, a delegative process. Yeah, there are ways. Hmm. There are ways to address scope and scale issues that in- anarchists have been using for ages. It, food not bombs feeds people on a global scale in 127 countries and cities all over the fucking globe on a daily basis. So awesome. And there is no leadership. There is no hierarchy. There is no central command. All of this just happens. It's possible. You can do it. We've proven it. But I mean, that that's possible because of just really dope individuals, right? Yeah. That's, it. you know, Christians. Actual Christians. Not the fake ones. No, no, no. I, I agree. But that's yeah. what I'm saying. It's like, it comes out of somebody's pocket. Oh, actually, uh, a lot of uh, Food Not Bombs are uh, what are called freegans. Um, they recapture food waste from our wasteful societies. Huh. Yes. So ultimately, it's only their effort. Huh. Well, I mean, that's still technically 
only, money, only, but only because you live in a capitalist system that put places yeah, a dollar absolutely. sign on human life. But that's a, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Yes. And if it's you if you're a if you're a if you're a kid and you don't have a job and you're on Instagram, you are immediately thinking that the world is against you. You see all these dudes in you know private jets and all this stuff. You're never going to be that guy. Um, but what you do have always is your labor. You have your ability to work and you have time. You're young. A lot of people d just immediately think that stuff is way worse than it is. No, you have your labor is something valuable in this country. But you see the perversion of that statement? How fucked up it Not is really. that you worded it that way? Well, you, you kind of insinuated that labor was free. And I'm saying absolutely not. Your labor is worth something. But what is it worth? It's directly worth money. That's the problem right there. I mean, it's a good thing in this society, though. Why? Because that's the way everything works. That's the way capitalism works. You need money to do anything. But they just proved that they didn't. Well, in that one particular instance, but if you want to make shoes for the homeless, I mean, I, I would assume that something would be different. You might find some free leather, but... You, you see how, how propagandized and captured you, you actually are? Like, it, it is... Well, I don't, I honestly, I don't see it in that example, just because I, that just, I, I'm, not, I'm not reading, you know, bullet points or anything like that. That's just, that just came out of my brain. I don't well, know. Well, neither am I. <laughs> Sitting here looking... No, I just mean, camera. like, I don't, I, I don't, I, I've never talked to anyone on Twitch or anything of the it's... sort. It's entirely possible for a collective of people, a community, one could say, to acquire and facilitate the process of doing whatever they need to do. If you have any doubt about this, look at somebody like the Amish. You ever seen an Amish barn raising? Yeah, that's super sick. Yeah, it's quite a marvel, isn't it? That's actually incredible. Yeah, I'm sure you're. I'm sure you're you're, you're bringing this up as an as an example, but yeah, I'm sure you totally mean it. Like it's I, it's amazing. Yes, it is. It's it's a marvel of cooperation, and that's what you can achieve: a tangible item that has in your system, mine by force, yours by choice, a value. That you place upon it in monetary amounts. What's a barn worth? It's worth a lot. Barn's an expensive piece of kit. True. The Amish can throw it up in an afternoon. Yep. Job done. They can haul their own lumber. They can do everything. They'll saw that wood, man. Like, so, yeah. All things are possible if you cooperate. So, yeah, hmm. I, um, yeah, I, stick around. I'm, I'm going to call it here. We're going into bad movie night. Um, it's been, okay, yeah, I was just going to let you know, uh, my phone is about to die. It's okay. Dude, super cool talking to you, man. Super like, cool. Likewise. Um, like I said, maybe, maybe a little ax, maybe a little Luke, maybe a little John James, right? Maybe time to revisit some of that stuff. Okay. Jingleheimer Schmidt. Right yeah. on. Alrighty.